Right, welcome back. This is part two. We're going to be figuring out how to separate parts of the gun, adding bones to kind of move the stuff around, and then working with bone constraints. So before we kind of go into it, I've been saying the word bones a lot, and I think it's kind of helpful to know what I actually mean when I say that. The bones, much like the bones in our body, like if you move a bone in your arm, all the skin and muscle that's attached to it is going to move with it. So that's a like the analogous kind of concept that in animating something like this is like. So if you make a bone and set it to the slide, you move the bone for the slide, the slide comes with it. So the slide is kind of your like skin and muscle, and your bone is your bone. You move it with it. So bone is just a part that you have dedicated to move something. And then in terms of bone constraints, that is what will actually allow everything to move together. Because you're going to have a bone for a slide, a bone for a magazine, and then a bone for whatever's left over, your main bone. And you're going to want that set up so when you move your main bone, the magazine and the slide come with it, and they're not just stuck there floating in space. So first thing we're going to want to start to do is separate out the parts. So just select the model you have, go into edit mode by pressing tab, and then the first part is kind of just selecting the part we want to separate. So let's start with the magazine first. So select a part of it, and then if you press the letter L while you're hovering over a vertice, L will select everything that's linked. So all the linked vertices will get selected. And then this is where wireframe comes in handy because we can actually see and make sure we've selected all the right stuff. And this is kind of what I mean with uh, CSGO models are nice because with when you actually select one of these vertices, it's nicely partitioned out so you actually get all the parts of the magazine and not half of it or something because of how the model was made. So, which makes it easier for us. So that looks like the magazine's nicely selected. So we're gonna hit P, and then, which will separate, and then we separate by selection. So that will separate all the things that we had selected. And this will add it to the kind of late, like number of things we have in here. And you see it was named P2001. So give that a name, we're gonna call that magazine. And we kind of just rinse and repeat with the other stuff. So select our main model. We're going to want to separate the slide now. So go into edit mode and then hover over one of the vertices and hit L. And that will select everything that's linked. But notice that it didn't select everything like the sites didn't get selected. Some of these striations in the slide didn't get selected. So you can just do L again and like repeat it. You don't need to hold shift or anything for it to pick up the additional stuff. So I did it with the rear sight, do it with the front sight, get all these small details. And then do it with these parts here. L, L, L. Do it on the other side. L, L, L. And then a good way to check if it's selected what you actually want to select is that you can move it out and see actually if that's what you want. But starting out and not really understanding how some of the models might work or what you actually want to be visible and not be visible, this might not seem very descriptive. Just like, is that everything I want? So this is where moving it along that kind of local axis, that local axis, excuse me, might be good because you can move it, so G and then Z twice, you can move it and be like, is that all I want to move? And it's looking like it is, so undo that. And we're going to separate that again by pressing P and separate by selection to separate the parts we've selected. That'll add a new entry and we'll call that slide. And then this is what's left over. 
as the kind of main body part. So now that we've separated all the parts of the guns that we want, like you can separate the trigger if you want to move that, or you could separate, excuse me, separate the slide catch if you want to move that, but these things are kind of extra details that aren't really going to be picked up on in the, the actual animation. So you can separate them and animate them if you want, but they're kind of extraneous, if you will. So now we want to start adding the bones. So to add the bones, you select the part you're going to want to add a bone to, go into edit mode, and what we're doing is we're going to be setting where the cursor is, which is where the bone will get added. So select a vertex on the mesh where you're going to want the general bone to go, and then hit shift S, and this will give you cursor options, so where you want the cursor to go, and then you want to set it to cursor to select it. So as you can see, the cursor went to the vertex we had selected. And then now we can get out of that and click on the actual armature, which will switch our view over to the armature. And then, so right now it's in pose mode, as you can see in the bottom left. We want to go into edit mode by hitting tab and then doing shift A, which will add a bone. And you can see the reason why we put the cursor where we wanted it to get added, because it gets added at the cursor, the bone. So, and then there's two parts of the bone, so you need to select the bottom as well, as well as the top to select it. And then this is just where we kind of scale it. So, S to scale, and then we're going to move the Z axis, move it in a little bit. But you might notice that you can't scale it on any axes other than the Z axis. And to be able to scale it on those axes, you have to do Control alt s And then you can select which axis you want to move it on. We don't really want to do it on the X, because we don't, you don't really need it to be a large bone. As long as you can grab it, that's all that really matters. So we're going to make it bigger on the Y axis. So make it reasonable size, in the gun a little bit. As long as you're able to grab it, it's good. So, and then we're going to actually name that. So you can see on the right side that the bone properties tab kind of opened up. And we're going to name that the part of the gun that it's dedicated to. So I'm going to call this magazine. So now we have the magazine bone. And then you just want to kind of repeat this for the other parts. So we're going to get out of edit mode of the armature. We're going to select on the magazine. And then you can also, you can do select from this kind of panel. So you can just double click, or not double click, you can just click on the icon once to select it. So we'll select the magazine, go into edit mode. We're just going to pick some vertex in the middle of it. Set our cursor to it, doing Shift S, cursor to selected. Then we can exit that, click on any part of our armature, go into edit mode of the armature, Shift A, add a bone to our uh, cursor that we put. Then you need to select the both parts to select the full bone, and this is where wireframe might come in handy because you you won't be able to see it in solid view in some of the positions it might be put so I'm just gonna put it there to control alt s scale it on our y axis get a little longer we're gonna move it back and then we're gonna go into the bone properties tab with this bone selected, we're going to call it Magazine Bone. Oh, I just realized I misnamed this one. This should be Slide, not Magazine. 
So we have the slide bone, magazine bone. Now we need a bone for everything else that's been left. So once again, hit click on your your part that you want. Go into edit mode by hitting tab. Select a vertice or vertex, excuse me. Shift S, cursor to selected. Get out of this edit mode. Select your armature. Go into edit mode of that. Shift A adds bone. And then select both parts of that bone. And then scale that accordingly. And control S to do long planes. And then we're going to make it large so it's easier to grab because this is the thing you're going to be working with the most because this is the bone that's going to be set up with constraints so the whole gun including the arm or the hand that's attached to it is going to be moving with so this is the thing that you're going to be grabbing a lot moving around doing all that so you want it the most accessible which is why it's kind of near the front here because when the hands start coming over and grabbing stuff and doing things it could get in the way making it a little easy a little harder to grab so then we'll just name that main, the main bone. And there we go. We've set up a bone for each part of the gun. But you might notice that if you try and move these bones, the part that they're supposed to be moving is not moving. And that's because we haven't set up any bone constraints. So we haven't told the bone, like we haven't told it what is supposed to move with this. And we can do that through parenting. So we're going to start with the slide. So select the slide. And then shift select the bone. And then from here, you can do control P, which parents. And then select bone. So that sets a bone constraint. To not, excuse me, not a bone constraint, but parents it to this bone. So now when we move this around, it actually moves with it. And so in terms of parenting, the much like a parent with a child, wherever the parent goes, the child's going to follow. So we've set the parent to the bone. And in terms of what gets set as the parent, it's whatever you select last and then do control P and set the bone. So we're going to repeat that with the mag. So this is what I mean. It might be hard to grab with other stuff in the way. So, and then we shift select the bone. And since this is our last thing we selected, then control P to set parent to. We tell it's a bone. Since the last thing we selected before we did the parenting command, it's what gets set as the parent. And then we're going to repeat this with the last part. Just select the main, shift select the bone, control P, oops, control P, and then select bone. So now we have a bone for each part, magazine, slide, and main. But now is where we want to add the bone constraints. So we want to tell it, okay, the slide bone and the magazine bone, we want it to move with the main bone. So that when we move this, the whole gun follows, and it's not just this one part. So in order to do that, we're going to start with the slide bone. So select the slide bone, and then this little bone with a little chain or something wrapped around it. I'm going to select on that, and then we're going to add a bone constraint. And the bone constraint we're going to do is child of. So add child of bone constraint. We're going to set our target to the armature, the right hand. And then the bone, we're going to tell it to follow is the main bone. So whatever you've called the main bone, as I'm referring to it, that's what we want this to follow. And then if something, when, once you do this, if it like moves off somewhere or does something like that, just 
just hit set inverse and that will bring it back to where it should be so now we should be able yep so now we've told the bone constraint for this bone to follow the main bone so we're going to repeat that with the magazine bone so once again in this bone constraint properties tab with the little bone the chain on it add bone constraint child of we're going to set our target to the right hand and then once again, we're going to set the bone to the main, the main bone. So now that's that. So now we have the whole gun that's moving with it. But we also want this right hand to follow when we move the gun. Because this is, the main bone is kind of the master bone that we're using to move this right hand. So we'll select the armature, add bone constraint child of. Once again, the target will be the right hand. And then the bone, much like all the other ones, is the main bone. So now when we move this, yep, the hand follows, the magazine follows, and the slide follows. And now for the left hand, you might think follow the same trend, set the target to the right hand, bone to main. But we actually want this hand to follow the magazine bone when we move it, because this is going to be the hand that's going to be pulling out the magazine. So select your left hand armature, child of, set the target to left hand, and then the bone we want it to follow is the magazine bone. So when we move this, the left hand follows. And as you can see when moving these bones, you can still move these individually on their own. Just whatever edit you make, the main bone keeps the position of bringing it along with. So now we've separated our parts, we've added bones to each of the parts, and parented them so it actually moves with the parts that we separated. And then we added bone constraints so that the slide bone and the magazine bone, as well as the right hand, follow the main bone. And then we set the left hand to follow the magazine bone. And kind of by proxy, because this left hand is following the magazine bone, and then this magazine bone is following the main bone, when we move the main bone, the left hand will also follow. So in the next part, we're going to start getting into actually setting up for animation and then actually doing the animation and using the animation panel and that. So I'll see you there.